is actually a really interesting, exciting area to look at. Mm -hmm. um, on the one hand, I think there's a lot of incredible possibility of how technology can affect people in developing worlds. Mm -hmm. One is, um, as I was talking about before, you know, the possibility of um, more democracy. I mean, for people to, if, for example, somebody in a rural area can have equal access to mm -hmm. technology, now that's mm -hmm. the big if, you know, uh -huh. equal access, here's a chance that they can actually be a player on a much mm -hmm. more level of playing course. field and being involved in what's going on in the world and, and have access potentially to things. Mm -hmm. And, and um, again, from like a democratic standpoint, you know, here's a chance that in theory, if people have access to that technology, mm -hmm. can be much more involved in, okay. in this whole political mm -hmm. process. I mean, I think there's possibilities like in a place like Nepal, if people were able to have access to mm -hmm. technology on a more equal level, here's a, a chance now that people that were excluded from so many uh -huh. aspects of the decision-making process might be potentially able to be mm -hmm. a part of, of that. Um, and then these are big ifs because mm -hmm. The reality is that right now there's still an enormous disparity of um, access to technology in de the developing country. Mm -hmm. And that is going to create, I think, a further divide and greater uh, okay. polarization mm -hmm. until people can get that access. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, I think, going to become just a greater and greater distinction between people that are like now computer literate and uh -huh. technology literate and, and able to be um, communicating to the world like mm -hmm. the internet and with other people in their communities versus people that are really left out from that and um, you know in a place like Nepal um, where I spent a lot of time and, and lived you, know, you see there's a huge distinction between people in the urban areas that have that access mm -hmm. to technology and in villages. So, you know, in the developing world, a lot remains to be seen as far as the kind of access people will have mm -hmm. to this technology. But I think, um, I think it's a fascinating possibility. Uh, of course. Um, and, you know, and I think there's a lot of voices that are out there that we have not had access to hearing. You know, people telling their stories as a filmmaker, for example, mm -hmm. being able to hear the stories of people, being people being able to get their voices heard through a medium whether it's like, again, mm -hmm. online, through YouTube, uh, through writing, through messaging, there's so mm -hmm. much that is now being kind of, these barriers that people would have had before mm -hmm. is now being broken down through mm -hmm. this, um, you know, kind of equal access mm -hmm. to, um, to being able to get your voice heard. And, and I think there's also a lot of possibility economically as far as, I, you know, how um, the internet can be utilized, you know, in, in, again, in developing countries, mm -hmm. and people being able to have access to potentially selling things or getting, you know, information out about new technologies. Uh -huh. and so, um, you know, I think we still have quite a ways mm -hmm. for where that's going, but there's a lot of mm -hmm. possibility with that. And um, how do you see the it impacts your, your ability as a filmmaker? Do you think it has any influence? This um, this development in technology, mm -hmm. and since you work in the, um, countries like Nepal, yeah, do you see that it, it influences your work in any? Um, what technology or or the way to? Um, sorry, this is not a very clear question, but the way um, the um, this availability of different images of the internet has it affected your work in any. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, for example, within Nepal, mm -hmm. the, the possibility now for people within the country to mm -hmm. have access to being able to see a film, for example, that is about a movement that mm -hmm. people there were a part of, and people in rural areas being able to have that, that opportunity mm -hmm. is enormous. I mean, but Nepal in, in the rural areas still um, lacks basically mm -hmm. all aspects of technology of <laughs> and, and in many areas, you know, they, things are, um, electricity is all driven by solar mm -hmm. power, if even that, um, you know, and so in order to bring something like media mm -hmm. and film there, you have to have, um, some solar generate, you know, or, or generators okay. mm -hmm. doing that, you know, so it's, 
it's uh, still quite far from being easy, but mm -hmm. you see the enormous impact that that, that can of have mm -hmm. you know, in being able to bring these kinds of images to people. And if people have that capability of having their story told and mm -hmm. shared, again, within the same same country and the same community, is mm -hmm. really powerful. <laughs> and, um, and I think also on that note, I mean, one of the things that really excites me is that, you know, and interests me as a, as a filmmaker is thinking about new avenues and technologies being able to tell stories, mm -hmm. which um, I think is very exciting and something I'm really interested in. You know, I think there's a lot of possibilities that exist that are out there that are not yet um, created, but mm -hmm. 